so you can hear. Uh, good morning and thank you everyone. I am delighted to be here today with Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, our Secretary of Technology Services and Security, Jason Snyder, Secretary of Administration and Finance, Matt Gorkowitz, Secretary of Education, Dr. Pat Tutwiler, and Commissioner of Early Education and Child Care, Amy Kershaw, was going to be with us, um, but was pulled away. Uh, this, where is she? Oh, you're in the back? Okay, great. Well, Amy is here. Good. Welcome. And I see Rep. Farley Bouvier and a few other folks. Nice to see you, uh, including our Comptroller, Bill McNamara. Thank you very much, sir. We also want to welcome here at the podium our Danvers Town Manager, Steve Bartha, and Amy O'Leary from Strategies for Children. We're here today to announce the filing of the Future Tech bond bill. Future Tech is a five-year, $1.2 billion investment in our information technology systems. We are committed to making sure that this state government is more accessible, more effective for our residents and for our businesses, as well as for visitors to Massachusetts. Critical to that mission is making sure that our IT systems are up to date, safe, secure, and easy to use. These investments advanced through this bond bill will help us achieve those goals. They will allow us to integrate and improve the user experience across all of our services. They will help us advance digital accessibility and the equity work that we've already engaged in and announced last summer in partnership with the disability community. They will also strengthen our cybersecurity to protect public assets and private information. This bill will advance the work underway to modernize areas like health records, unemployment insurance, public safety data, and so much more. A good example of the kind of impact that this will have is in our child care financial assistance portal. We know that improving user experience there will make it easier for families to get help with their child care costs. This has been something that's been a part of our affordability agenda since we started. Amy's going to share more about how that will work. In the end, this is about making Massachusetts more competitive and more affordable, as well as more equitable. This bond bill, Future Tech, will put us in a stronger position to take advantage of new technologies like artificial intelligence in ways that benefit our residents, that benefit our states, that benefit our businesses. This makes us a more competitive state to live in and do business in. We recently released our economic development plan called Leading Future Generations, where we set out a clear vision of our state's leadership into the future. That vision has to be reflected across all of government and importantly in IT. IT is no longer just a layer of state government. In many ways it is the basic backbone and infrastructure that enables all of government to go forward and work. It's also the place where residents engage. An innovative state like Massachusetts must lead, must be at the forefront in terms of providing world-class customer experience and accessibility. So I'm just really grateful to Secretary Snyder, who has come into this position, um, done tremendous work over the last year with his team, and uh, once again, he's doing it now by delivering us this uh, this future tech bond bill. I also want to thank our colleagues in administration and finance, Senator Gorkowitz, for their work in working with uh, the secretary and his team to bring this forward. We look forward to the legislature's thoughtful consideration and feedback on this uh, important bill. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our lieutenant governor. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Governor. And I want to extend my thanks as well to all of the teammates who have worked on this issue. There's a lot of technical and complex issues incorporated into this bond bill and the work that we're going to be able to do. But ultimately, it's going to make it easier for both residents and business owners. And I'm certainly coming at this as a former local official. You know, we've got 351 cities and towns who all have some sort of an IT system to run, whether it's a worry about cybersecurity, helping residents get online for so many of our communities. Your internet service is your front door into services that you rely on. And so supporting uh, cities and towns is a big part of this IT bond bill. Uh, the future tech legislation will help us provide $25 million for community compact IT grant programs. Steve knows a little bit about that. In fact, probably the poster child for using those resources. 
that's going to help us drive innovation at the local level, make local governments more efficient, and provide them the technical expertise they need and the resources um, to partner with local taxpayers' money to ensure that they have the sort of system they need when it comes to information technology on the ground. And then we've got $30 million for the Municipal Fiber Grant Program. Seems simple, but actually connecting systems, helping cities and towns close those final gaps between fire stations, police stations, public safety, schools. It's a really key need. There will be resources to help with that. I think we all understand the role that technology plays in delivering governmental services, and it really does impact the quality of life for people, for businesses, for access. It's important to recognize that it takes this sort of hard work and long-term commitment and planning when you have an IT plan in place to be able to have the resources to implement and operationalize that is really critical. And that's what Future Tech is going to help do. Um, that's what these investments are about, making us as a commonwealth a place that can make sure we're focused on the challenges that lie ahead. And there are a lot. If you talk to municipal leaders, there's always opportunities for their systems to be uh, improved and also challenges when it comes to making sure their systems are not accessible to the wrong people. So we're pleased to be able to offer these resources, submit this legislation, and help make our communities stronger, more successful, and more accessible. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our secretary, uh, Jason Snyder. Thank you, LG. I would like to start by thanking the Healy Driscoll team for recognizing the urgent nature of the priorities that are contained in this legislation, and also recognizing the work done by the ANF team to set up the EOTS uh, Secretariat for Success as we worked on this critical legislation we're unveiling today. When we think of IT, we might think of back offices and back end business functions. I am here to tell you that is no longer the case. IT used to exist separate from policymaking and it would be used to implement policy already enacted or facilitate business already transacted. Today, however, information technology is a fundamental driver for policy creation, not just implementation. Today, providing services on behalf of the people of Massachusetts means doing IT. And as such, modernized government services mean modernized IT systems. The former cannot exist without the latter. And the far wide-ranging projects contained in this authorization show just that. I'd like to highlight just a few examples to underscore the real material benefit of this authorization to drive policy and good government. When I think of IT driving policy, I first think of the digital roadmap that Governor Healy launched last year to align the various state agency services under a single portal with a single identity access management system. With 1 million Commonwealth users enrolled to date, the platform will scale as more users enroll, enabling greater personalization, accessibility, and integrated services over time as it incorporates more agencies and centralizes now disparate systems. This funding will also allow the modernization of our permitting and licensing systems to support a modern centralized licensing solution that will improve the constituent and stakeholder experience by streamlining business operations and enhancing customer service, all of which will result in faster processing of permits and licenses. As Amy O'Leary is going to discuss just a little later, the Future Tech Act supports parents seeking childcare financial assistance. But I did want to mention another key education investment, the Early Education to Career Data Hub, which will provide anonymized data and research on student progress from early care and education settings through their K through 12 education and into higher education and the workforce. This information can be made available to school districts, families, and the community, other state agencies, and research and policy organizations to allow for improved data analysis and better decision making. The project to modernize our unemployment insurance process provides the ability for people to get back to work and access needed training. In addition to modernizing the Department of Unemployment Assistance Operations and the underlying technology systems for DUA transactions, the Future Tech Act allows initiatives to assist workers in gaining new, more personally desirable, and higher paying jobs through direct online access. Together, these measures improve the user experience while ensuring that both the DUA and the Mass Hire Department of Career Services run efficiently. Additionally, the bond authorization allows Massachusetts to be forward-looking and widen our lead in artificial intelligence, 
by harnessing the technology, workforce, and higher education ecosystems that exist here to use AI to enhance the delivery of state government services to the public we serve. In closing, we see this authorization as a vehicle to make a real difference for families as they interact with the Commonwealth for services. It is our mission to bring the benefits of government IT systems innovation to all residents of Massachusetts, and that means IT accessibility needs to be front of mind as we tackle these challenges. EOTS is proud to advance the Healy Driscoll priority of access and inclusion to the IT space. Now, I wanted to, want to turn it over to a friend in this work, Danvers Town Manager Steve Bartha, who can speak to the missile significance of this legislation. We know that big initiatives like this work best when state and local officials work together. I've had the pleasure of visiting Danvers and meeting with the town manager and their talented IT director, Coley Cousins, who is doing extraordinary work to regionalize and deliver professional IT services through the North Shore IT Collaborative. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary and Governor. Um, we don't like to use Colby's real name, though. We use an alias because we're afraid he's going to get poached from us uh, before <laughs> we're ready to be done with him. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege uh, to be part of this program uh, today. It's also an honor to be representing uh, the incredible work that's happening on the North Shore in regional IT and cybersecurity. I call it a privilege um, because, as the Secretary alluded to, Danvers knows firsthand just how powerful it can be uh, to have the state as a partner in this critical work. We know that the exciting investments being discussed today um, in local IT infrastructure and capacity building across the Commonwealth will be as powerful in other regions as it has been in ours. Over the past half decade, Danvers has led a coalition of seven communities in Essex County to develop a regional IT model, including Essex, Hamilton, Manchester-by-the-Sea, Middleton, Topsfield, and Wenham. The MAPC has been a partner and more recently, Maya has been a partner in the cybersecurity arena. Uh, but the most important partner by far has been the state through its community compact program. To date, our coalition has received just over a million dollars in compact funding uh, to cover things like the uh, fiber uh, infrastructure that has been uh, rolled out across North Shore. Uh, we used the compact grant years ago to do a study that resulted in the IT department we have today and a separate compact to uh, establish our strategic IT regional plan, which is uh, nearly complete in its implementation. Uh, the investment in compact dollars leveraged several million dollars more in local funds appropriated by town meetings in the, in the town so that we could uh, execute this strategy. Our model is built on a, a backbone of intermunicipal fiber, shared staffing, shared data centers, shared disaster recovery services, and most recently a multi-layered uh, cybersecurity fabric uh, that's in, pl in place across the region, which has been tested and, and stood up to potential attacks within the last year. Um, the capital investment provided through the Compact program accelerated the building out and beefing up of our shared infrastructure, uh, but more importantly, it laid the groundwork for the regional operating model that now exists on top of that infrastructure. Our smaller communities are now less dependent on vendors for strategic IT decision making. They're safer and they enjoy better service at a lower cost than would otherwise be possible uh, going on their own. And Danvers is able to defray some of its own ongoing operating costs without impacting our own internal services. And if I'm being honest, it's also just plain fun to be working on something that's innovating and different because a lot of what we do is the same from year to year and this is, this is new and it's fun. But we wouldn't be doing any of it uh, without our partners in Boston. So we want to thank them. Um, and we also want to say here's to you know, many more years of success and progress that is sure to be unlocked by the programs being discussed this morning and the provisions laid out in the Future Tech Act. Um, and with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Amy O'Leary, Executive Director of Strategies for Children, to the podium. Thank you, and what a pleasure to be here today. I started my career as a preschool teacher at the Ellis Early Learning in South End of Boston, and like many early educators, I was soon promoted to be a program director. As a preschool teacher, I was honored and humbled to work in partnership with families, watching their children grow and learn. As a center director, I became more interested in how policies were made and wondered who made the decisions that impacted children, families, and the whole early childhood system. 
I learned about eligibility, state median income percentiles, consecutive pay stubs, and all the documentations that families needed to access financial support as I enrolled children into my program. I learned all of that from the families that we served over the years. That experience has informed the last two decades of my work at Strategies for Children, an advocacy and policy organization. I come to this work as an advocate and an early educator. Usually I am testifying or sharing remarks about increasing educator salaries, developmentally appropriate curriculum, access for families, and the importance of high quality early education for children and communities. I am usually not invited to speak at IT events. That's why it's so exciting to be here to talk about the system that supports the system and just how critical these IT improvements are to improving the lives of children and families. As part of this bill, there'll be the, we hope for the authorization of new capital investments, including 12 million to support the Child Care Financial Assistance Modernization Project. This author, uh, authorization is important to delivering on our affordability, accessibility, and equity goals around early education and care. We know that the Department of Early Education and Care has a huge directive, and currently the work to support these important goals uses multiple systems. We've also seen a growing need for state agencies to work collaboratively on early childhood issues. Currently, families seeking care, educators providing care, and providers running businesses that connect the two must navigate multiple systems just to accomplish one task. The authorization of these capital funds will allow the Commonwealth to make significant and much needed investments, which could include updates and streamlining to the wait list, the case management system, and subsidy <coughs> tracking for the payment system. This upgrade would also raise the effectiveness of EEC's IT system so that it is on par with other state agencies, allowing for better collaboration. This sector needs the best cutting edge technology in order for the system to function at the level that we all need it to, to achieve our collective goals for children. We know that having access to financial assistance can be the difference between a parent being able to go to work and a child experiencing a high quality experience before kindergarten. We are grateful to the Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Tutwiler, Commissioner Amy Kershaw, and members of the administration for this investment. The COVID-19 pandemic shined an important light on early, the early childhood ecosystem in Massachusetts and created opportunities for systematic change. Infrastructure matters. This capital project is critical to actualizing the lessons that we've learned. By updating the outdated technology systems, we expect that EEC will be able to serve families more effectively and equitably and to pay providers in a more timely fashion for financial stability. We look forward to supporting this important work with our partners across the state so that we can all see the system that we know that young children and families need in the Commonwealth. I'd like to welcome Governor Haley back to the podium. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, thank you all of you for your comments. Thank you in particular to Steve and, and Amy for joining us this morning um, to really you know, explain why these, why these numbers, why these movements really matter and how, they, how we expect and want them to play out in the lives of folks across the state and the way we, the way we do business here, um, the way we engage with our municipalities. So uh, really excited to have you here this morning. 